Hello and welcome to the world of Matthias. Today is a very, very special day because today we're going to open this yellow box from China. And uh, this is not an ordinary guitar. This is actually the first guitar uh, of this type that I have ever owned. So this is a jazz model. This is a ES, it, it was ordered as a ES345. Uh, but the specs got a little bit uh, changed, so it's uh, kind of a blend uh, between the ES335 and ES345. So, yeah, we will see what it is. But it is a this is a Cathy build. It has been in transit for well over 40, 40, 50 days, almost 60 days. So it has been a long time coming, but now it is here. So I'm extra excited about it. With that said, let's just open it up and see how it looks like, okay? Now, before we start today's video, I'd like to ask you a big favor. If you could just uh, consider like and subscribe to my channel and also uh, just maybe uh, share it with your friends, I would be most grateful. So thank you for that. Now, let's get on with the video. I'm getting quite good at this. And here is the beauty. Let's take off the lid as well. So let's just inspect um, the case that it was sent in to see uh, so we don't miss anything. And it has been uh, taped over here just to hold it in place. Let's see how we best do this. Maybe we should just this is the cable, this is the uh, toggle switch knob, and also the Allen keys. So nothing fancy about that, but they're all there. And here it is. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, we of course we need to take off the plastic bag. And here it is. Here it comes, guys. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. All right. So let's just put on the toggle switch knob just to get the right idea from the beginning. Now, Kathy has really picked up that uh, my love for these cream toggle switch knobs. Uh, I like them. Really nice. So here it is, guys. This is the ES345. I ordered it as a 345. As you can see, it has the stereo inlays here on the fretboard. Uh, but you can also see that it is no baritone and it has no stereo output. So this is kind of a blend. It became that way during the building process. Yeah, there's some, uh, when I look at this guitar, there are some interesting features on it. So uh, let's move in for a little closer look. So let's just start by looking at the front of the guitar. Uh, as you can see, I asked Kathy to uh, relic it, but I wanted her to relic it in a different way than she usually does. So I wanted these lines to go in this direction instead of the usual that direction. I saw that on uh, Gibson online, so I thought that that looked nice and neat, so I wanted that. Uh, also, uh, but as you can see, it's quite faded, so I may buff this up, uh, or I will buff this up, so it will get a better shine than it is right now. Um, also, you can see that uh, the, the hardware has been relicked, and it almost seemed like they have been sandblasted it. It doesn't look 100%, but it looks better than the other relicking uh, attempts that I have seen. So, yeah, we'll see what we do with that. This is the pickups, and we will talk about them a little bit later. Uh, this is the pickguard, which uh, looked dull, but it has a protective film over it, so that's okay. You can also see the thing with these uh, hollow, uh, hollow guitars is that you, you see the wires inside the guitar. And these wires, well, as you can see, I don't like this. It's like ketchup and mustard, and I don't like that. So maybe I just change those um, wires just to get that to look a little bit better. If we move up the uh, 
uh, to the neck. This is a rosewood neck. It looks a little bit dry, uh, but uh, other than that, it's a nice piece of rosewood. You can also see the typical stereo inlays here, and they look fairly nice. So, so nothing to comment there. Uh, no fret nibs, as you know, guys. I'm not. I'm not a really big fan. I don't mind fret nibs, but it's not a big thing for me. So I usually don't request that and pay extra for that. Uh, yeah, moving up the head. Uh, also relict, as you can see. And also this aging uh, here uh, looks, uh, I think that looks better than the relic, uh, than the aging on my um, custom guitar, which I think is a little bit too yellow. So yeah, I think that this aging really looks really nice. I won't take this off because I won't say what uh, what logo it, what logo it is, but uh, that is a moot point because I'm going to change out the logo on all my guitars. I'm going to put either uh, the World of Matthias on the headstock or simply just Kathy. We will see what this guitar will get. So it's a moot point. I won't show you that. But yeah, that's the front of the guitar. The back of the guitar. It's kind of the same story. You can see the lines uh, are going the opposite direction that they uh, usually do. Um, I think that that looks nice. And uh, also here you can see that it's a one piece neck. And also that the neck has been relict uh, on the back side as well. You can see it here. So very nice, nice feel to that. And here are the tuners. And these are the typical uh, Chinese tuners uh, with this. I don't know why they are using these green types of tuners. I don't really like them. The relicking, they have just sanded it down a bit to take off the shine. These will be changed out to a good Goto's uh, uh, tuners. So yeah, they will look much nicer than they are now. And as you can see, there is no uh, Made in the USA on the back side. I really don't want that on my guitar. And also I have a specialized serial number on the back of the headstock. It's actually my birth date, uh, written in the European order. So yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's a little bit closer look on the guitar. So let's quickly go through the specs that I sent to Kathy when I ordered the guitar. First off, I wanted a nitro finish and I wanted it to be transparent red. If it is a nitro finish, it's always hard to tell uh, just looking at it. And I don't know if the camera picks it up. If you look closely at it, it actually is a transparent red as I ordered. But uh, with that said, yeah, the finish of the guitar is actually quite dull and I, I really don't know why it is that. I have to, uh, I have to puff, buff this up. So it's quite dull. Uh, in some areas it's dull and in other areas it's uh, a little bit um, shinier. Uh, what I will say is when I look at the shiny areas there's a little bit of orange peel and that could be an indication that it is in fact a nitro finish. But yeah, a little bit dull in some places, as you can see. Uh, so if you are buying this guitar, uh, not willing to do anything with it uh, and just want to hang it on the wall. I don't know. Uh, it's not a shiny item as it is. So yeah, probably have to do something about that. I want it more shiny than this. But yeah, nitro finish and it is transparent red, although not so much transparent. Uh, cracked paint, yes, they did that. They did that exactly as I wanted them to do, um, as I have showed you earlier in the video. Gold hardware, all of that is here. Um, that's nice. Uh, a little bit strange relicking. I will see what I can do about that. Um, Mm. So I, maybe I won't relic on. I, I want it to look used and a little bit old, but not relic as very worn down. So 
I will see what I can do. Just a slight relic, maybe. A Veritone switch. No, she couldn't do that to, for me. Which I think a little bit odd, because I have seen a group build that she's doing by Noel Gallagher Guitar from Oasis. And that one has a Bigsby and has a Veritone switch. So I'm not really sure what's up there. But she couldn't do it on my guitar, so maybe I will do it myself on the guitar later on. Uh, you know, a lot of things get lost in translation. So what I thought I ordered from Kathy, she said she couldn't do the veritone switch. She couldn't do the soldering. So what I thought I was ordering was actually a veritone, sw a veritone switch on the guitar, but that I had to do the soldering myself. But uh, once I got the, the updated pictures from her, I saw that it, it wasn't any uh, veritone switch on it at all. So maybe I have to do that myself. Also, that is the reason why the output jack is here on the side and not here um, on the ordinary place. Is that I wanted a stereo output jack. So, um, but she couldn't do that either, which I also think is a little bit strange because it's not hard to do a stereo output jack. It's just two outputs. So uh, maybe I do that as well. I'm, I'm glad that I have the output jack here and not here if I want to do the stereo thing. So yeah, no veritone jack and uh, no veritone switch and no output jack. That was in the original uh, in the original order, but she couldn't do that. That's a shame. The serial number with my birth date, yes, she could do that, and she got the 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 numbers right, so that's okay. No made in the USA on the back of the headstock, yeah, not a big thing for her to do, but she didn't forget about it and there is no made in the USA on the back of the headstock. Cream binding and this is something that I really think that they got right on this guitar um, because it's it's not a white binding and it's not a yellow binding it's actually cream binding and I really like this you can see it up here on this inlay on the head that it's actually a really good aged um, look to to the inlays and also to the binding. So yeah, kudos to that. Uh, that is uh, that is actually good. I can tell you, we're going to ma make uh, uh, another video on this guitar where I update it with all the nice uh, things that I have. But I can tell you right now that from where I from what I can see here. Uh, I think it's the small pots. Yeah, we will go inside this guitar on another video uh, with my um, with my small camera and um, to see how it looks inside. Hmm. Yes. So that there it is. So let's talk a little bit what I'm going to do. I'm I am thinking about putting a big spear on here. If you want me to do that, please leave it in the comments. I also am uh, planning to put on some really nice pickups. I bought these Gibson pickups. I don't know if you remember that for one of my unboxing videos. So these are the 57 classic with gold covers. So this guitar is going to sound really exceptionally good. Obviously, I will just change out these golden screws here for black ones. And um, yeah, I will buff it up so I get a better shine on it. I want to change out the logo to something more personal for me. And that's why I ordered it this way, so I can just update it myself, and I will do that. It also will get new tuners that are nicer than these ones. I'm not saying that these don't work, I'm just saying that I want tuners that look better and feel a little bit better. You can go for Gotos, you can go for Ge Geiker, you can also go for this brand named Kaish, which uh, are making very affordable and very good things. Or maybe I just go the whole way and put on some Gibson tuners here. We will see. We will see. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. I will oil up the fretboard, of course, and get that to look a little bit darker and feel a little bit nicer. I will go over the frets just to get them more playable. Yeah, that's what I will do. So yeah, what do you think? I think it's a smashing guitar. Just look at it. And it's one of those guitars that you really want in your collection because it's it's a guitar that does something that no uh, solid guitar does. So and it's not an acoustic guitar, so it's somewhere in the in the middle. So I really want this in my collection. If I 
if I'm going to sell off all my guitars, I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep a Fender, I'm going to keep a Gibson, I'm going to keep a ES35, and I'm going to keep a acoustic guitars. And that's if you have all of those guitars, then you have all that you really ever gonna need. So uh, yeah, this is a keeper. So I'm going to put in some extra work on this and get it exactly to where I want it. Yeah, so let's uh, listen to how it sounds. <laughs> 